Greetings, Earthlings. Today I am back with the brand new Behringer microphone clone of the Shure Beta 58A. This is the Behringer BA85... No, sorry, that is the Shure Beta 58A. This is the Behringer BA58A. Confusing name. If you are interested in this microphone, it will set you back only $25 on Amazon. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the 18i 22nd gen with the gain set just at around 9.5 on the dial. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost the audio in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First, everything comes in this nice plastic carrying and storage case. You will of course get the microphone, a microphone stand mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I have honestly no complaints about this thing. It feels very similar to the Beta 58A in terms of quality. It does have an all-metal, wait, no, that's, again, that's the Beta 58A. The Behringer has an all-metal handle and construction. It has a metal grill. It weighs in at 320 grams. There is a little bit of foam on the inside of the grill to try to reduce the plosives a little bit. And here is what the microphone's capsule looks like next to the Beta 58A, in case you're interested in that. And on the bottom, there is the XLR port. Then as far as the specs, the microphone has a super cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 53 decibels, and an impedance of 300 ohms. Now I am spinning around the BA85A to 90 degrees to show you what the off-axis rejection and coloration is. We will continue around to 180 degrees, show you what the rear rejection is, continue around to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front. Because this is a handheld microphone, I will pass it back and forth between my hands to show you how it does at rejecting that noise. Now I'll go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. You hear that? It's like, uh, uh, uh. Now let's see how this thing does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone. Two feet away from the microphone. About four feet off of the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. For the lead gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. This is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And now I am in a completely untreated room, and here is how the BA-85A sounds. Now to give you an idea of the competition for this microphone, I am going to do a quick comparison against the microphone it is copying, the Shure Beta 58A, as well as the Behringer XM8500, which is about 5 or $6 cheaper. So right now I'm about three inches off of the BA85A, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have switched over to the Shure Beta 58A, which is about five or six times more expensive than the Behringer. I'm at the same distance with the exact same gain setting, and here is how the audio compares for spoken word. And now I have switched over to the Behringer XM8500, which is the cheapest microphone in this very short comparison. Same distance, exact same gain settings, and this is how the audio compares.
Derringer Just so you know you're tricking no one now Cause we all know what microphone you're copying But how did you get away To see another day I thought that sure would sue your butts Because, come on you're not even trying to hide the fact that you're ripping off the Beta 58A. For shame, Behringer. For shame. At least try to hide it. At least try to hide it a little bit. Come on. You're better than that. Okay, what can I say about this thing? Well, it plugs in, it works, and it costs $25, and it sounds pretty decent. And first up, in terms of pros, the price. It is $25. That will be a recurring theme throughout the rest of this video. It is insanely affordable, and it sounds pretty good. On the note of the sound quality, the second pro, I think it is an improvement over the Behringer XM8500, which is one of the most requested microphones that I have given out. But then in terms of cons, it did a terrible, terrible job at handling noise rejection as well as plosive rejection. And something that I have noticed is on the budget dynamic microphones, that seems to be one of the first things to go. On most really cheap handheld dynamic microphones, they are terrible with plosives and they are terrible at handling noise rejection. And this microphone is no exception there. I also noticed some resonant frequencies in the microphone and that can really hurt a recording or if you're live, you can really run into issues with feedback from the PA. And lastly, it has a somewhat grainy sound to it, which may not be the most apparent thing to you if you are listening to it on its own, but when you switch back and forth between this microphone and the Beta 58A, that is when it becomes extremely noticeable, and the Shure is much smoother and much more pleasing to listen to. And now, what are my overall thoughts of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I thought it worked surprisingly well there. The boost in the upper frequencies brought out this really nice and aggressive tone, and I think for overdriven and punk and metal guitar, it would work really well. Then on the acoustic guitar, I thought it sounded dead. It was not open sounding, it was not lively sounding, it was just bland. So I was not a fan of it on that instrument. Then for singing to my ears, it is very top heavy and over boosted in the upper register, which leads to it sounding somewhat artificial. Does it work? Yes. Will it work? Sure. But is it my favorite? No. And lastly, for spoken word, everything I just said still holds true. It is a little bit top-heavy and a little bit grainy, but I think it is definitely tolerable. And if you take into account that it has a $25 price, I actually think it's pretty good. And on the note of the sound, I do think that it is an improvement over the XM8500. I think the upper register is still overboosted, but it is a little bit less sharp. The XM8500 has a little bit of piercingness to it, and it also sounds a little bit less nasally and honky. So if you're looking for that type of improvement, I think it's a great option. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Absolutely. For $25, I think this is an insane option, and it may have just usurped the XM8500 as my recommendation at this price point. Is it better than the microphone that it is emulating, the Shure Beta 58A? By no stretch of the imagination. But it costs one-sixth what the Shure Beta 58A, and when you take that into account, it's a pretty compelling option. All right, that is going to wrap up for today. I hope you were as impressed with this microphone as I was considering the price tag on it. It's pretty crazy. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, subscribe, logo beneath me. Want to check out everything that I work on? Just go to podcastage.com. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I just love them. You can, do so by, <laughs> you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you later. Bye.